Joining us now on the Deseret First Credit Union Hotline is Merrill Hodge, former NFL star and current ESPN NFL analyst. And let's not forget Tech Mobile standout running back. Merrill, nice to have you back. <laughs> Always nice to be introduced as Tech, tech Mobile. <laughs> some, some people are driving going, why is Tech Mobile? <laughs> <laughs> Only the greatest Nintendo game ever. That's right. Merrill, uh, I hear it all. It started off, so you got that right. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> now I hear you're going to be part of a new NFL draft show on ESPN uh, on April 12th and 19th, uh, in which your responsibilities will include a profile of BYU's Bronson Kafusi. What is it that you see in Bronson Kafusi that you will feature during that show? Well, I'm gonna back up just for a second. You know, um, when we have done the draft, and I say ESPN over the years, I've always felt that. You know, our bosses, they want to cover it 360. And I've always felt we cover it 180 and we keep repeating the 180. And the 180 that we cover, quite honestly, is really not uh, conducive to transitioning college players into the NFL. Example, we tell about what they did in college, what records they have, trophies they won, national championship or bowl games they won. Then we tell what they did on the pro day, their pro day and the combine. Well, None of that really has any relevancy whatsoever to the environment they're about to enter. The environment in the NFL changes from what it is in college. I mean, the field alone, I try to tell people this all the time, is different. You know, and they go, well, what do you mean? So if you look at the field and you take the college hash marks that are very wide and you bring them in, the game in the NFL is played in the middle because of that. You know, you take about five yards off of one side of the field or not, or of the other based on where the ball is aligned. It's a different game. And then the, the talent is balanced. You play in the middle of the field, so there's a certain skill set. So and I've been trying to get us to do the show. Well, ESPN finally agreed to it, and we're doing it under our matchup format. So it's based on watching tape, so coaching tape of the NFL and coaching tape of college. Mm. Now, part of our show actually today, tonight it airs. It'll air at 6 p.m. you guys' this time on ESPN. Um, you know, I went through – Here's how I do it. I have no agenda other than to find the skill set, a football skill set that will translate to the NFL. I get a list of five or six guys deep in each position that people are saying are going to be great players. Now, I get done with the five pass rushers, and I've, I've watched Bronson Kafush. I've known him for a couple of years with Bo being there. I'm like, I'd like to see where he stacks up. So I plugged him in, and I watched about three games. And it only took like one game for me to immediately – Say he's better than Ogba, the kid from Oklahoma State, who was highly touted. Then I go Shaq Lawson. He's better than Shaq Lawson. Wow. At Clemson. He's better in Clemson. Now, right, now you say, wow. Why, why would you say wow? Now, that was, I really want to know, why would you say wow? Probably because the media has portrayed Shaq Lawson as, uh, you know, the unstoppable force. Okay. Now, you, you're probably right. I, have, I don't even know where these guys rank because when I got them done, I'm like, I wouldn't touch Ogba. I wouldn't touch Clint. I wouldn't touch Lawson. And they're talking about him in the first round. Ain't no way. In the NFL, you have to be able to play well with your feet, hips, and hands. Like You have to have pass rushing skills. You've got to show that you play with great leverage and that you have a foundation of those fundamentals. If you don't, I'm telling you this right now, you've got no shot. Now, these two guys I just referred to, I literally have about, I'm looking at their notes, I looked at it about 100 plays on each kid in about six games. I, I repeated them over and over, they just lay on people. There's no explosiveness. There's nothing in their hips. There's no hands. Well, there's oftentimes guys get sacks. I remember one time Ogba got a sack, and I'm like, I'm going to tell you this, he didn't get credit for that sack. The tackle had manhandled him, and he threw him into the quarterback. Sure enough, you're on the stats, and I'm like, are you kidding me? So you, what you have to do is you have to understand the environment they're going to first. I mean, if you don't understand that, then you can sit and watch tape all along at college and you're just not going to have a clue. So I put in Bronson Kapusi. Now, here's where he translates really well. He has great feet, hips, and hands. I mean, he's got good fundamentals um, from a defensive perspective. But here's where he separates himself from those two guys. If that's just not enough, which that is clearly enough, you can line him up. You guys know this. You can line him at right end, left end really critical you can put him over the guards when you can move a guy in the trenches if you remember justin tuck from notre dame i mean he arguably was the super bowl mvp when the giants beat the patriots because 
they used Justin Tuck in that second matchup at the Super Bowl to get pressure on Tom Brady by lining him up over the guard, whereas in the Week 17 matchup, they used him out all over the tackles. So in the Super Bowl, they created all these different matchups, and it actually changed the NFL in a way where you're trying to find guys that are good enough, big enough, and bad enough, and smart enough to go across the offensive line and find matchups. Because the NFL is about that. Well, I'll take Bronson Kafusi over those two guys any day, anywhere, anyhow, and you've got a better chance of transitioning to the NFL because of all the things I just shared. These other two guys, one-dimensional, line up on one side. Other than Ogba, he'll flip to the other side. And oftentimes they only do that because he's getting whipped by the other left tackle. So they move him to the other side to see if they can't get some pressure. And those things are factual. They're not going to change. They will, both of them will struggle immensely. And somebody, you hope that where Bronson goes, they have a good defensive line coach because he can only get better. Yeah. But he has a great foundation. Like I look at him and I'm like, okay, I don't have to teach him how to do work his hands. He plays with great leverage, has great instincts, is smart, played in a lot of positions. Okay, a lot of the battle's over. He knows. People go, well, you can teach him that. You can teach anything, but you forget to ask the question, can you learn it and apply it? (laughs) That's the big hurdle. I can teach you anything. (laughs) Can can, Can the player learn it and apply it? Well, I've already seen him apply it. I got a good shot. I go, listen, I'm going to be able to do a lot with this guy. The other two guys, I'm just going to be working on getting them to learn how to play the game at the level they're about to enter. That's a daunting task. I don't want that task. That is just too hard. And oftentimes, if you're especially you're a high draft pick, now you don't have sacks, can't get on the field, I mean, you're done in two years. So, I mean, you need to watch – when you watch the show, anyway, getting back to that, you'll – you'll see that the foundation that we create from the environment, all these positions are going. And we're going to do Derrick Henry in this, in this first show. You know, now he's a guy who won the Heisman Trophy, but he does not translate well to the NFL because you know, of the, the, the most important skill set for a runner going from college to the NFL is what I call spontaneous agility. And people always go, what is that spontaneous agility? I'm like, did you guys see the combine? I saw yes. some of it, yes. Okay, now I'm sure you saw the agility drill where they had a cone here and a cone there. And everybody makes their cuts at the cone. Now, that's, I think it's a very good drill to see the agility. However, on Sunday at 1 o'clock, those cones are moving. And those cones are 6'5", 300, and 6'2", 245. And they're grown men, smart men, and they know what they're doing. So they're not just sitting there, and I can't just make a cut at the cone – I got to make people miss in a tight environment, especially as a runner in the NFL, much more than in college. I mean, it'll triple in the NFL, the traffic and the tight quarters. So if you can't get in and out of breaks, you don't have power. The odds of you being successful on a consistent basis is slim to none. And the real problem with uh, Derrick Henry, I've never seen a guy just, he just, he's trying to, his eyes see it. He just can't get it. He just, his feet won't work that quick. You know, his, he tips over. He takes a lot of shots. And it's just going to be a really hard transition for him. And people will be disappointed because they're expecting Heisman oh, Trophy winner, 2,000 yards. Now, those 2,000 yards are going to get cut down to about 700. And that's if he gets 365 carries when he comes to the NFL. So, it's a, it's a show that kind of shows all that. But we, we do highlight um, Bronson Kafusi towards the end of the show and – we, and I, I don't do that because Bo goes to BYU, or I, I, I do that based on the tape I saw. If I thought Bronson Kafusi couldn't play, I wouldn't even put him in the show. I wouldn't even <laughs> right. do that. And I we'd mean, still I, talk I, to I, you I, about it. Yeah, we'd still ask you <laughs> yeah. the question. Yeah. But yeah. I but I tell you the truth about him too. I mean, yeah, I have no agenda. I have no agenda on this thing. I, I know nothing about these guys. It, the tape tells you the truth about the player, and then you just share that truth because I ain't smart enough, and I had to spend nearly two months to watch all of these players you know uh, i heard you guys talk about mitch matthews bo sent me a text to look at mitch matthews and then i met with him and so and even watching him when i got there watch bo and byu play i really don't know what his skill set is until i study him and then it, it, it becomes clearer now i can see the things that he can do well he'll have to get better at if he wants to transition and can he transition yes i think there's a lot of things mitch matthews does really, really well that people will covet when, when they're looking at wide receivers in the NFL. 
when there's a conversation about players, we, we've discussed this at length. There's what they do on the field and what you're talking about. You watch film. Then there's the off season and dudes running around in their underwear and their spontaneous agility and there's all these drills, right? What weight do you give to each in how you evaluate a player? Well, what you just explained, and there's there's two types of evaluations in the NFL because I I've been doing this for from playing nearly a decade and the next about 30 years, over 30 years of from playing and studying this league. I've sat with GMs at NFL Films for a couple of years. I'm not going to give names because but they were measurable guys. We watch a guy on tape, and what I mean is they'd be like, oh, 6'3", 245, runs a 4'4", 40. Now I'm watching him. I'm going, okay, this guy stinks. This guy can't play. <laughs> and then then we come to another, oh, God, 5'11", you know, 215, runs a 4'640", and I'm uh, down on him. I'm like, okay, now that dude can play. I'm like, now that's a football player. Well, I'm going to back up even further. It was my second year in the National Football League. Chuck Knoll came in one day, and he said, and there had been this argument going on within the organization for actually four or five years. At the beginning of training camp, everybody's there. Every scout, everybody, a part of the organization is there. So you have regions all over there all come together. They wanted to do the first practice like a mini combine. You know, we had the 40, we did the agility, we did the vertical. And Chuck well, didn't want to waste his time on that because it had already been done. Well, Mr. Rooney came to him, and he's like, can we find a common ground? They find a common ground, and here's the common ground. Chuck tells us we're going to run the 40 vertical and um, agility, uh, agility drill that we had uh, that they set up. Everybody will have every ounce of pads that they, could, that they are required to wear. That means DBs, get your thigh pads in, get your knee pads in, get your hip pads, and I want butt pads in. Get your socks rolled down. I want to see that you're taped. If you spat, get your shoes spatted. And then they didn't cut the grass, I swear to you, for a month. <laughs> we run the 40. Rod Woodson, a world-class sprinter in college, number one draft pick. And he was drafted the same year I was drafted by the Steelers. He ran the fastest 40, four, six, eight. Wow. Okay. Now, what – we come to the meeting the next day, you know, after all this stuff is done, we've wasted a day of practice. And he said, and Chuck shares the fastest 40, the fastest vertical and the biggest broad jump and all the numbers. He said, now, guys, now that we found out who, um, are, who are the best at these drills, I got five weeks to find out who can play football, and that's who I'm keeping. Well, right then I was like, there's the difference. You have athletic measurables and you have a football skill set. If you make choices based on athletic um, drills and evaluation, I'll promise you, you will be, you'll make mistake after mistake after snake. You have to let foot, the football skill set drive your decision making and your evaluation. Do I think it's important that you blend in the athleticism? Absolutely. But that cannot drive you. Every year we get, in fact, it's funny you said that, okay? I'm talking to some GMs on our air at ESPN. I start talking about Bronson Kafusi, um, and it's what's his name who ran it. I'll think of his name here in a minute. It's the senior boy's like, oh, boy, I really liked him. He goes, he liked these, said he's tall, big, you know, and all the things we already know. Um, and I go, um, I go, I'll tell you a guy I just, I don't get is Ogbaugh from Oklahoma State. Here was his response. Oh, he blew it up at the combine. I'm like, every year there's somebody <laughs> who benches 30 pounds, 225, 30 times, and runs a, big, a nice 40 because they're big. And they get drafted high based on that. And every year these guys can't play. But that's a GM who bases a lot of his evaluation skills on measurables. It's a big mistake. It's a drastic mistake. And I have learned over and over again, you go down that road, you will make tons of mistakes, less mistakes from just a football evaluation. But you got to know what that skill set is and how it pertains to the environment they're going into, too. So that, that's not easy either. That takes a lot of time. Fascinating stuff with Merrill Hodge, ESPN NFL analyst. You can watch his NFL draft show featuring Bronson Kafusi tonight and April 19th starting at 8 p.m. Eastern. You were at the BYU football spring game with the new staff, the new changes, the new schemes. And so we want to get your take on what you saw on the field from BYU, including your son, Bo Hodge, about uh, and, and what you think this team is capable of moving forward under Kalani Satake. Well, okay, the first thing, when I, 
I, I used to sit. I'm gonna have to back up when I started coaching Bo. Bo started playing football at seven. That's when he wanted to start playing, and they'd let him play if I would coach. So part of my thought process, if Bo wanted to play football, was I'm gonna take everything Chuck Knoll taught me and apply it to give it to these kids because there's so many unbelievable life lessons I wanted to teach through the football. But part of teaching football, especially with – I didn't know what position Bo was going to fall into, but I could tell he, he fell into quarterback really quick because, A, he wouldn't shut up. B, everything I called was <laughs> stupid. And um, he knew more than I did. So I was like, all right, well, <laughs> you're not going to work as a running back or wide receiver or a tackle. Okay, I'm going to make him a quarterback. And, and he was a gifted. He had, Bo had just some gifts. I, still this day, of all the players I've played with, he's the most instinctive player I've ever been around. A guy – and I got to know him from the day he went on a football field and knew nothing. So that's how I know how instinctive he is. Well, I made our, all our quarterbacks, we had to play under center. I made them play under center. They couldn't play in the shotgun for three years. And they fought me every day. They, because, you know, kids just want to stand in the shotgun now. And I think in youth football, we do a disservice to our young kids by not teaching them how to play the position, the complete position. And I said, Bo, you never know. I'm going to tell you this. I never know when you're going to need this, but I do know this. You're not going to ever do it in high school. I know what high school you're going to. You're not going to do that. And based on what's going on in colleges, you may never see it there. But let's say you were good enough to go all the way, and you've never taken a snap under center. It could cost you. I go, look at it that way for me. So do it. And I fought. They fought. I fought. I fought. Well, uh, <laughs> when I saw him under center, and actually one of the first time he went under center, he texted me and said, hey, thanks, Dad. I knew what he was when he said, thanks, Dad. That's all he said. I was like, I know what he's talking about because he can play under center because he learned how to do it at a very young age. And what was interesting, and he's really helped me, is we look at evaluating players in these spread offenses, which from my, my perspective, this is not college perspective, so understand, I know college is about winning in college. That's important. That's what they care about. But taking guys out of a spread offense in the NFL – is one of the most difficult things to do. They learn nothing. It is, they're simple offenses. They don't teach things that you really need to teach to fully orchestrate and play like in the NFL. That's why I always, the more I look at these spreads, I'm like, God, why do, you, why do you limit yourself like that? And what I mean by that is, do you know how valuable the huddle is? I can't tell you how many times we changed things, made plays by the communication one guy to the other about a play that was going on because we were in the huddle. The full compliment that you get and you teach the quarterback how to play, the command they have, protections, hot routes that are not taught, how to read coverage. These wide receivers at BYU in the spreads, they have no idea. I'm like, that's almost mind-boggling. So what I'm saying is I know everybody I talk to from Bo to all the they love it. And I think it's awesome that it's there. What you have to realize is it's a new system. There's a lot of new learning. There's a lot of layers of learning these kids have to – have to learn how to do it. Sometimes when you're learning, you don't play with great instincts and you don't play like you want to because you're thinking a lot because you're learning. You know, that's going to take a while. You know, you have so many reps and so much time at college, which hurts these kids. Um, but eventually, I believe it's the right path. There's a lot of energy about it. Um, Bo obviously loved it. I, I, I mean, I've known Ty for a long time, Ty Detmer and you know, I rave. I mean, I've always liked him as a person, but I've heard great things about him as a coach. And the ball loves playing for him. You know, when you have a guy that will teach you and you love playing for, you get every ounce out of your kids. And there's no doubt they're going to do that with that staff. Merrill, fantastic stuff. We appreciate the time and uh, look forward to uh, the NFL draft presentation tonight. Yeah, make sure you watch. You've got Bronson Kafusi. He represents very well in the NFL, guys. Oh, we will be watching Merrill Hodge on the Deseret First Credit Union Hotline. Deseret First, your values, your timeline, your financial.